Okay, we're here with our 1982 AMF Alcourt Sunfish Phoenix, and we're giving her a bath today. I don't know if she's had a bath since she went through the hurricane a couple of years ago, and the move and everything else has been going on and being stored outside. But uh, just a few things about uh, giving your boat a bath. Uh, the number one thing is you know, don't use a ton of water because there's a lot of holes in the boat that are designed into it, and the water can get into some of those places go inside the hole and then you're having to uh, either let it dry or drain it. So I don't know, it's like, well, it's a boat, it goes in the water. Well, yeah, that's fine. And drain the boat after you went, go sailing if there's a little leak somewhere. But don't, uh, don't be the culprit, don't be the person spraying hundreds of gallons of water on it and have it uh, seep in through one of these 13 holes that's in the uh, combing that uh, may or may not still have sealant or have ever been sealed. Uh, the boat's designed with the drain in it. The drain's there for a reason. It's uh, on the deck. It's underneath this dagger board over there. We'll show it to you in a minute. Um, one of a few things we want to talk about though in the cockpit here are um, you can see there's two, four, six, eight per side little areas where there's what we call stress cracks in the gel coat. The gel coat is 40 years old, so it dries, it shrinks, and over time, as it flexes, it uh, can develop a little crack. That's not a problem because the, uh, unless it gets bigger, in this case, because there's a fiberglass underneath that is not cracked. And how can you tell whether it's a crack that needs attention or not? Well, you can do an air leak test, and if you see, it's dirt right there, but if you see a bubble coming up out of there, then yeah, there's been some other kind of damage there. But uh, for now, that's just, you know, leave it alone, go sail the boat. But these spots are here because in between the cockpit tub and the hole underneath, they put some little blobs of uh, expanding foam sealant to bond the cockpit tub to the hull. And so we got, uh, we got eight of them on each side. So I wouldn't, this wouldn't scare me off of a boat. But um, while we're talking about uh, bathing the boat, we'll also talk about the holes where you may look for leaks during the uh, during an air leak inspection. Now these air holes are pretty good, but underneath there's an area where the uh, the cockpit is also bonded to the deck all the way around with an adhesive. So there might be a, there could be potential for a leak there on this one. There's a hole right here that uh, is a vent hole for the hull that lets air go in and out as the temperature and the uh, air density changes inside the hull. You don't want to get hot, moist air inside, expand the hull and pop it. So if you see this on your boat, one, don't seal it up. And two, don't store it over the winter and let water fill all the way up. As soon as it gets to that hole, it's going inside the hole. There's, um, we'll just go ahead and keep talking about more places you can check for leaks. If your boat's leaking somewhere, is this seam between the cockpit tub and the hole underneath where the baler goes through. We find them there quite a bit, actually, because uh, the boat's been dropped on the baler, something else happens, etc., And the uh, hole can gap can form there, water can go around that baler and sneak inside. Here's a more, two more designed holes here. It's normally a wooden or aluminum backer block behind it, but the water doesn't care. It can find a way, it can find a way in here. You don't normally sail with this part of the boat submerged all the time, but a little bit of water could work its way inside of it. Um, so there's two of those on either side for your uh, bridle. We'll talk about a few things we've done different. We like just, I don't know, it's just fun. It's overkill, but we put a little block on here and a little line bridle. It's just fun to watch this little block go back and forth. But some people don't like it because it bangs the deck and it makes noise. Another way you can attach is just put a bowling around this line and let that uh, sheet slide back and forth. Things you do have to watch out for if you trailer your boat and you leave this block laying on the deck, uh, this could happen. Scratches the gel coat. 
this will buff out um, with a little bit of probably no 800 1600 2000 grit sandpaper light buff and we don't mind coming back over with a little wax if we sand light sand scratch these off because we're not usually sitting back here but we don't wax around the cockpit just because you might go whoop, unless you like to slide off your boat now conversely there's an area back here i don't remember if i did it we've had the boat about 25 years or it came this way uh, this someone has sanded through the gel coat and you can start to see uh, fiberglass underneath and a similar thing has happened right here so you got to be careful if you sand the gel coat is pretty thick it'll take one or two aggressive sandings but after that you start to sand it off on the stern there's a um, Four more holes that are designed into the boat. It's supposed to go into a, a, an aluminum backer plate on this boat, but uh, you wanna put a little bit of sealant if you pull this gudgeon off uh, where, on this screw hole before you put it back on. And in fact, on the new boats, they put uh, copious amounts of sealant back there, like a 5200 type, so that either the screws or the sealant I mean, underneath the whole plate, they put it. In fact, you see it oozed out around all the edges. Uh, you won't get leaks, and if your screws corrode and fall off, then you probably have sealant holding your uh, gudgeon on. Here's another little stress area. This is stress, so we call them spider cracks. Probably happened from someone hitting that dock or something. A little bit of impact. But there's nothing flaked off. We don't see damaged milky colored fiberglass underneath so it's good and you'll see a lot of those kind of things along chines in all the corners of the boat these holes right here they only go through this lip that sticks out underneath between the deck and the hull the flange and so that that should not go into the boat but if you find someone who's done a bad rivet job they may drill at an angle and they may actually go inside the hole. So the way we can spot if we got a leak is where the water goes in is a lot of time where the water comes out. There'll be a water if you put a boat on its side and you'll start to see all this uh, gunk and dirt and et cetera building up. Or when you pull a piece of trim off, you can see underneath there's just all kinds of garbage because it's wet and the dirt collects there and you almost don't even have to do an air leak test. I can bet you 100 bucks that that's where one of your leaks is gonna be. Uh, when you're cleaning your boat, don't forget the bottom. We haven't wiped down the bottom in quite a while and it felt, it felt pretty rough actually. Um, we'll need to get the boat flipped over and do a little better job of uh, cleaning underneath because all of the, all the rain that comes down and hits your nice cover, rolls off the side it starts getting on the boat here and it runs underneath. And sometimes it just stays there and collects dirt, gunk, whatever. And so after a while, you can start to have moss or moss or something, lichen, licking, however you say it, growing underneath your boat. And uh, you're not gonna go as fast if, it, if the bottom's dirty. So you do need to flip the boat over, you know, especially if you're in salt water, get that crusty uh, dried salt off of it. But some of these lakes I've seen people sailing in, boy, I'll tell you, they'd be rinsing that boat off too. And there are a lot of uh, lakes where they want you to rinse them at the ramp as soon as you pull them out so you're not taking some invasive aquatic species off to, uh, to the next lake. Here's the uh, drain hole that uh, is talked about. And uh, you take this screw out, turn the boat up on its side like this and let uh, water drain out. If you see more than, I don't know, you know, half a cup full or just a little dribble, then uh, if the water just keeps running out for minutes in a steady stream, then you've got a, a leak you need to go find. So that's, uh, that's one way to check on the health of your boat. Uh, let's see up here, more screws and fasteners going through the hull. These go through the cockpit lip. They do not go into the hull, into the hull course they're not supposed to but if someone added this you know, maybe they drilled the wrong way poked a hole in the hole 
and you've got to go uh, find that and fix it. There's a uh, pretty easy ways to fix these kind of things. Here's uh, two more per design holes going into the hole. Like I mentioned on the combing, there's 13 of them. The original boats had a closed in rivet nut into the deck with a metal machine screw that went down, screwed it on. Uh, so there's a hole. Of, it's been 50-50 on whether we've seen sealant around those or not from the factory. And then uh, these boats are have rivets. Later they started using rivets going straight through the deck. So if you've got good sealant, there should be no water. But if your sealant's old or there was none to begin with, you're out here rinsing your boat for two hours. You're just shoving hole right or water right through that hole into your hole. So it's probably a good practice. We'll do it in a minute to tip our hole up and down, see if we hear any water sloshing around inside. If you do hear water sloshing, don't panic. It might be back here in your cockpit. So make sure you sponge that out. And um, so if you if you do hear water running back and forth inside, you know that it's you know that's actually inside. And for example, this boat, we did the last air leak test a year or so ago. It was missing a rivet in this combing. So that was just a good size 3 16 inch hole going inside, letting water in. Uh, there's uh, wooden backer blocks on these earlier models underneath the halyard cleat. Uh, these are in good shape. They're still holding screws. And then about 1988 and newer, there's, I think, an aluminum plate or some other kind of plate inside that holds the screws. There's uh, two more holes right here for your halyard uh, fair lead bullseye, or in some cases, there's a little block there. And then down inside your mast step, when we go to uh, look at a boat, we'll take a, a bottle of water with us and we'll dump it in that mast step and see if if the water disappears and drains inside the hole, we'll know that we need to pay a little closer attention to, you pick the hole up on either end, see if it feels like it's heavy, you know. In the old days, if we could pick it up between me and Skipper, it's like, no, nah, I might have a few pounds, but it's not 200 pounds. As we get older, now it might be like, we can't tell. So you might want to take an old bathroom scale with you. You could put you could put it under either end of the boat and weigh it and add it up and there's some physics and math involved that won't give you the exact weight but you'll be within a few pounds or so you'll know whether it's a 144 pound hull or a 244 pound hull if it weighs that much you won't be able to lift it so these boats uh up to 1988 and all, or 87 and all the literature we've seen up to the point where AMF was still making them. 139 pounds for fiberglass. Uh, wooden's gonna probably be five to 10 pounds more than that. In 1988-ish, when they got the, we start seeing the decks that have the rolled edge on them. 129 pounds is what I've seen. And I've seen claims, you know, run, running down as low as uh, 120, but I've never, I haven't seen the literature yet on if that's what, the hull is coming out of the factory out at. Maybe the new boats could be. Uh, here's uh, four more holes up here. These AMF Alcourt boats. It's a hundred and it's a wooden block underneath there, three quarter inch piece of uh, oak possibly or mahogany. Uh, about about this wide underneath and four screws into it. It's put on with adhesive and held also with the fiberglass strap. But, you know, 40 years later, it may not be in top-notch shape, or especially if the hull has filled up with water, that block has stayed wet, and now it's just it's just rotten goo that you can crumble in your hands. So, and here's, here's the fun you have in salt water. If you, even, even I think the most, you know, meticulous care it doesn't matter you can't get the salt water out from underneath that screw and eventually it's gonna it's gonna corrode this uh you know this is not it's pop metal underneath chrome you can see where it's starting to pop through there so 
our general rule is we don't use the bow handle to pick up a boat. Because as soon as you think, yeah, it's, it's solid, it's secure, you pick it up, well, the bow handle could fail, and now you drop your boat. So we'll, we'll grab under the lip. Our general rule now is pick it up as little as possible. Use a dolly or get, get an extra person, uh, whatever you need. So we'll get around to replacing this bow handle. And since we're talking about holes and backer blocks, we might as well give you a quick tip on, there's four screws here. And one of those, the screws may be the only thing holding that, that block in underneath the deck. So when you replace your bow handle, don't take out all four screws at once, because you might take out all four and when you take out the fourth one, you hear a, uh, a clunk inside the boat. That's the, uh, that's the backer block falling off inside. And now you gotta go through quite a tribulation to, uh, to get that thing stuck back in place. So take out, take out three of them, take out one, two, three, and leave this fourth one loose in it and turn this bow handle out of the way and then come in with your new bow handle and start a screw up here. Get it back in there so you can feel it. Engage that block. And then you can come back and take out the screw on the old handle. Swivel your new handle into place and put in the other three screws and snug them down. You can also tell that, uh, I know, I think I've replaced this handle when we first got the boat. We probably tightened that down a little bit too much, which contributed later to the corrosion failure. Probably put a little tiny crack in it, and now it's a, now it's a big crack. I could probably even push that off with my finger. But luckily, we have spares of these. So, I don't know. I added them up once. There's probably, there's, I think, 30-plus holes in this boat as it came from the factory, including the hole that the water's supposed to drain out of might be the hole that the water's draining in through. So look, uh, when you do your air leak test, look for all those things, uh, spray around. You know, we just spray the entire deck and the sides and the hole in the bottom, even if there's no piece of hardware anywhere near it, because we might find that, um, that this little, this little gel coat stress uh, fracture back here might go deeper than we think and there might see water bubbling out of there so go ahead and uh you know just spray the whole deck and look for bubbles now you might be wondering what happened to the hen hull identification number on this boat this boat was used in a college sailing program through the university system in texas and when they got done with the program they sold all the boats as surplus and the rules in Texas were that if you sold something as surplus or salvage, it potentially had no value to the state. Because if it had value to the state, they would have to turn around and offer it to one of the other universities or state colleges. So in order to, one, say they said, oh, it's of no value, and then they, they scratch off the whole number. The other thing it did was, if this uh, boat ever ended up in someone's, you know, smashed through someone's window after hurricane, they couldn't trace the boat back to the college and go, hey, uh, we found your boat in the living room. You gotta repair, repair it. So we know the boat's uh, 1982 based on the, the uh, markings. And we also know that somewhere on the back here is, uh, there's a remnants of a two. They didn't quite, it's not a, it's not a 72 and it's not a 92, so process of elimination. We know she's an 82 based on her colors. She has the Olympic red, white, and blue sail. And that makes sense about the time Alcourt really got big into the red, white, and blue theme for the bicentennial. So there's probably a few uh, holes that I missed in the hole, and I challenge you to make a video where you say hole and hole all the way through of it. And uh, you post your video where you look for runs, leaks, and errors on your boats. The um, up front, like say bows, another area people are always bashing into things with the bow. And it may look good, it might be a little chipped up, but enough of those impacts 
it's gonna split that seam inside. And water, like when we just washed it, water can run under this trim and right back in through that seam inside the hull. So that's what the trim is here to protect that deck edge flange and to make the boat look a little prettier. And being, you know, kind of liking to see the traditional look, we like the metal trim. It does the best job of protecting, but other folks have found a variety of other trims that'll fit on there. But just remember that one of the reasons it's there is to protect the, the flange underneath and metal's gonna do the uh, best job of that. So uh, Phoenix got her bath. I uh, will talk a little bit more about our, about our new, she rides on a dolly. Gave her a, just picked up a six by 12 trailer, which um, this one's aluminum, should hold up better in the weather where we're at versus steel. And we're gonna spend a, a little bit of time getting a, getting some type of pad up here, maybe a, some type of HDPE, some starboard or something. We'll probably just zip tie it, but um, something that makes a nice, so that's not just aluminum on aluminum here. And I might even put the pad on the dolly because I can probably get it if you put like a rag or something there and you leave it there it's going to trap moisture against this frame and you're going to come back a year later and take the moist take the rag off and see a uh, corroded spot and that uh, happened to us on one of our other uh, galvanized frames took it up to my boat trailer dealer I was real happy go hey look I put this here because it was in a spot where the door to our little garage car opened into the trailer i didn't want to ding my door so i just tied a tied a rag on there and he's like he pulled his pocket knife out and started cutting that rag off he's like and told me just what i told you traps the moisture especially salt water and underneath was kind of already a little chalky layer where corrosion had started he was able to tell us how to fix it just to clean it up get some cold galvanizing compound to spray over it and uh, help uh, slow down that corrosion. But that's uh, that's not what you wanna see on your expensive trailer that you just bought. And this, uh, this trailer was expensive. We paid uh, probably double what we paid for a steel trailer. But in comparison, steel trailer weighed 700 pounds, a five by 10. And this aluminum trailer, a six by 12, what did I say, 700 pounds the steel and the aluminum being a foot wider and two feet longer and doing what we need it to do um, only weighs 71 more pounds it weighs in at 771 so we're uh, we're pretty pretty happy about that and it's also got a better balance because it seems like the extra two feet got put behind the axle so i can actually uh, the other steel trailer i can't really pick up the tongue on it and this one, you know, one-handed, I can, I can at least lift it off the ground. I'm not going to hold it for any exterior, extended period of time or walk it around the yard. But if I need to lift it to get it that last eighth of an inch onto a hitch ball, then I can do it. So give your boat a bath. What we like to do is uh, put a little bit of Dawn dishwashing liquid in a spray bottle. Get out the good old garden hose and little rag and a sponge. I think it's required, it was, was required by Captain Jack to always have a sponge in the uh, cockpit, little storage locker to get that last little bit of water out when you're cleaning it up at the end of the day and not let it sit in there. So we're gonna finish uh, letting this boat dry, uh, get it off the trailer. And we took its uh, cover off today and uh, brushed off the big hunks of dirt and uh, threw it in the washing machine to get off the other rest of the dirt. Uh, you could spray it down, you know, in your driveway or on top of your boat, but I, I think I may have done that once. And by the time I got done uh, cleaning it all up, I think I ended up putting some water inside the hull of this boat. So 
probably at the time came in through the combing, which had one or two missing rivets. And there was one other spot on it. So that's uh, some things to take into consideration. It's not, not maybe as simple as you think when you start, but it can be if you know how to do it and what to look for. And like I say, just uh, keep these extra attention to these edges and underneath where the, the gunk runs off your cover and onto the hole. So hope y'all are getting all cleaned up and already out there sailing. And uh, or this is a good, good uh, lessons for when y'all come back from sailing and share it. Tell us what your favorite things to do if you like to wax the hole, except for around the cockpit. What type of product you like to use, or other uh, other tips you may have to keep your boat ready to go. And I'd always say if you can afford it or even if you can't, to get a nice cover to put on there. This is a Sunbrella made by a SLO Sail and Canvas. It fits the boat. This one has the little tail on it where you could leave the spars on the boat if you wanted for a couple of days. And it keeps all of this garbage that we just got done rinsing off, uh, bird poop, tree, tree parts, etc. Keeps that off your boat, so it only took me about less than 10 minutes to you know get some dust and some other stuff off the top part of the hole and um, protect your gel coat i think the covers when i bought them were around 300 has the straps you know we can take short road trips with it on the boat not worry about it i uh, wouldn't do a long trip with this umbrella cover because it can it can fray around corners and uh so we cover a, lot, cover a lot of ground here over 26 minutes. I don't, if anyone's still there, you better make sure like the, all the other people say, you better make sure you click that like button or put a comment. Uh, click on subscribe if you wanna be notified when we post a new video. And then go and find the little bell button. Click on that and it'll tell you to notify us, notify you of all the videos we post versus the ones that uh, YouTube thinks you should see. So we'll finish up here and we're, uh, Appreciate y'all taking time to watch and to uh, and to share your comments with us and let us know uh, how you're doing. If you got any questions, post them. If you got some uh, suggestions, uh, questions and suggestions, we're always about that. So, gonna head off for now. That ought to do it.